Surprise, surprise, Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back. Y'all thought Alexa was gone. No way. Alexa is back for at least this episode because we are doing our first Survivor 45 tell-all. And we are with Bruce Peralt. And I should have figured out how to say your last name first because I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce every letter. You did a great job. Great job. You, you didn't pronounce the silent E. The, the second E is silent, so you didn't pronounce it. Great job. I'm almost. Is that French? You would have done French, that. Right? It's so French. It's French, French Canadian. French Canadian. I'm almost there. So this is super exciting. We haven't had a tell all like this in a little while, and it's very fun to get Bruce, the first two time player of the Survivor New Era. Don't forget, everybody. He's the first two time player of the New Era. Bruce, how has it been since your season ended? Oh man, since the season ended, I'm going to tell you real quick. Like it's been peaceful. Uh, <laughs> it's been so peaceful. There's, there is nothing like, like watching yourself on television and you, you actually not even watch yourself, like, like the workup to watching yourself on television. And you're just like, oh man, what are they going to put now? What is it going to be? Who did I piss off this week? Oh my God. Who's talking about me? Like that, that was the anxiety that I went through. And then even, even after when I was voted off and I'm sitting in the jury, I'm sitting at home and I have friends and family that are here still with me watching. And I'm just like, man, I, I, I hope they don't show me saying anything or making any faces or anything like that. And I didn't, which was great. It's, it made my transition to the end of the season so much better. You were actually like cut out of a lot of the Jerry conversations. Cause like Kelly and uh, it was like Kelly and Caleb and Kendra, they were owning the show there. Oh, well, you know, I was a very, like I was a focal point of, I want to say 90% of the time that I was on the show, people, <laughs> I don't know what it was. Um, I have like every faction was coming for me, like right, left, you know, up and down. They're all coming gunning for me. Um, so I got a lot of airtime. And for me to not, you know, be shown speaking while I was in the jury, I, I did not take any offense to that whatsoever. Um, I let, as, as Jeff does right now with like people complaining about the show and complaining about people that might've quit or, or wanted to voluntarily leave. Um, you know, I, I just let the internet talk for me. Like they did yeah. their, their thing and I was just perfectly fine. And I sat back and listened. So, okay. so yeah, sort you, you listened. Yeah. But then you came in, I saw one tweet at one point where it was, somebody was just like, Bruce does not give an F <laughs> and he, he responded to that one. And you're like, you're right. I don't like, Nailed it. No, here I, don't. I am as an established grown man. Who's not really too concerned with what people I'll never see in my life are saying, but what was it like for you? Because you had the, the nightmare scenario in season 44, like it was the nightmare scenario. Mm -hmm. You get out there, you get hurt right away. I don't even know if you remember anything. Yeah. And and people were really excited when it was announced that you were going to be coming back. What were you expecting it was going to be like on the show? Because you weren't you weren't over you weren't a hundred percent positively received. Let's be real here, because of the way it was edited with Katura and you, and then Kelly's talking about, oh my god, he's so annoying. What's going on here? Were you kind of anticipating that because there was so much hype coming around around you coming into this? You know, I, I wasn't anticipating it. You know, I didn't think that I was going to come in as, you know, the the darling of the of the ball, like just like show up and everybody's going to, you know, love Bruce and all want to work with Bruce. Like I didn't have that thought. I did. I didn't know really what to expect because of the way that everything was edited and how I really I wasn't able to play the game for 44 mm -hmm. and the, the amount of love that I received. I really received like just a, and for 44. There were people that were like, oh, my God. Bruce bumped his head. Some people said jackass. I'm like, well, whatever. Like my shirt was too tight. What do I want me to tell you, bro? Um, so that was that. But then 98% of it was just everybody being so positive and, and it was a good feeling. And I'm like, oh my God, this is what survivors like. This is great. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I get out there and, you know, I got, I got one person hating the fact that I breathe air. Um, I got other people now starting to get annoyed with me over stuff that I didn't even know that I was doing, um, just living my life. And now I'm watching it all play out on television, and I didn't even know that any of this was going on. It's like, you know, you're, you're, you're lied to in the game, um, and then you're, you're lied to for a period of time. And then once everything starts happening, it's funny because you start getting phone calls before before like an episode would air and they're like oh man like hey love you man love you. and i'm like i love you too like what's going on everything all right like no i just love you man. Yeah. We're good, right i'm like yeah it's just a, it was a game i really don't care <laughs> <laughs> but people were just like 
love you, man. But yeah, Michael you know, Corleone like, loved Fredo too. Right? Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> <to make. laughs> that, that's crazy. Yeah. So because because it was like very rarely do we see an injured player come back. They did a whole season of it back in season 25, not a whole season, but we had the leaders of each tribe with Russell Swan redacted and Jonathan Penner. So we had those three people all play and lead their tribes. And so we don't really get to see injured players get that next opportunity though. So I think people were just excited that it was like, okay, survivor is willing to go out of their way for somebody who just had the worst luck. Cause we saw it with Pat back in season. What was that? 37. But there really wasn't an opportunity to bring him back after that. They had already kind of started moving forward with what 38 was going to be, that Winners at War was going to happen. So I think it was cool to see this. And I, in my opinion, like we had got, I'd gotten to meet you like beforehand. And I was like, oh man, like this, Bruce is such a nice guy, whatever. I can't wait to watch this guy play. This is going to be epic. (laughs) And then, and then. I started to see how this edit was going. I said, "Does Katur is Katur going to say anything else? Like, is that all it's going to be?" And like, it was just very fascinating and interesting how quickly it happened. It was like you hit the beach. You had that one moment where you cried when you got to the other beach, and that was like really human and emotional. But yeah. other than that, it just seemed like you were kind of the punching bag early on in the season. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's um, I, I want to say that it was probably something like a maybe like a like a resilience edit. Like I'm at that point, I'm 46 years old. I I've lived, you know, a life that I'm halfway through my life at this point in time. Like I've lived a great life and to be able to get out there and go through the ups and downs of emotions that people just, you know, want to see you fail, but then keep winning. Like the amount of winning that we did by way of Bellow, um, I'm not saying that had 110%. It was all me. But damn it, there were lots of times that we sat there and it was like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And it was like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Because you can ask the questions and move on, on on what needs to be done. And that's one of the things that I did. Like, I was constantly wanting to move forward. Let's get this done. Let's make it happen. And that alpha personality, dad personality, whatever you want to call it, during challenges, yes, I was dad. Like, I'm dad. I'm dad. I'm coach. Like, I'm yelling. And... Even at one point in time, I remember it was a, the block puzzle um, where Caleb was in the way. And damn it, Caleb knew he was in the way. I even I said something to him afterwards. I'm like, you know you were in the way, right? He's like, yeah. So I'm like, I'm just like, move. Like, get out. Like, I would have ran him over. Mm-hmm. And then being told that I should use other words, like, come on. Like, I'm not going to do that in competition. I would not expect you to do it in competition. Like, I, it's it's competition. When we're sitting there, we're at the beach. Like, that's when you're going to, I'm going to give you uncle. Like, I'm just going to have fun. Like, I'm. I'm going to want to show him to my thing. And, you know, to be able to go from that high of, of being there, low of, of, you know, being someone's punching bag and watching it back and be like, oh, man, like, I really was, like, annoyed, annoying to these people. I'm like, wait a minute. That, that doesn't fit the mold of who I am. Like, mm-hmm. this, this isn't right. Like, I got friends that will just tell me. Like, if I'm being annoying, my friends are like, yo, just shut up. You're being annoying. And I'm used to that. So if nobody says that, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> <It forgot. laughs> Did you sense because because your tribe kept winning in the beginning? Did you sense that there was tension or like not everything was perfect, but you guys kept winning? So there was not like what are we gonna do? Throw a challenge or was it like it really seemed like we're we're a good group? We're gonna go Bella strong the whole way. I think that the the overall sense that I had is that I had a bunch of competitors on the team, which is great. Yeah, that's um, why y- y'all did so well. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, Kendra's a beast. Like, she's just she'll she'll throw herself through a wall. Um, Kelly, her she's very brilliant. She's very smart. She and she's very athletic. She's gonna want to do things that she needs to get done to to win a, to win any kind of challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I can go through everybody. Mm-hmm. But the I think the problem we ran into is the conversations that we started having on the beach, which were weird to me. Like. I I was I and not at any point in time that I look at this and say, hmm, well, I don't like this person because of X, Y, and Z. I never looked at it like that. Like I wanna um I know the game. You know, I I, I gotta work with everybody. That's just the way what you're supposed to do. But when you start throwing around like wanting to vote somebody out before you even need to be voted out, like we never lost anything. So we never had a reason to have a conversation about that. We never even came close. Like, and you know, thanks to Lulu, Lulu was a, a you know, for lack of better words, a shit show. Like, we'll we'll take that all day just to keep winning. And we take first, we take second, we take second, we take second, we take first. Like, it's okay. Like, we'll do those things. We switch tribes, move over. Like, 
we still have our core people that are competitors. We bring another competitor, Caleb. Like we win more. Like come on. Like this is this is the way it's supposed to be. Um, but our downfall was just just the conversations about things that just didn't need to, to people didn't need to talk about. Like uh, it was just weird. It was very very weird. I want to I want to talk about this then. Uh, talking about the the relationships over there because obviously it's all pers all perspective, right? Your perspective is one thing, and Jake's yeah. was going to be something else. Kelly's was going to be something else. Katara's going to be something else. Kendra Brando. It was it was all going to be all over the place. But you kept talking about how you were really close with Jake and you were really close with Kelly. Did yeah. you have a sense of this women's alliance that took place because Katara lied about her birthday? Did you know that this was coming? <laughs> like, did you have any idea, or did that kind of surprise you watching that back on the edit? Um, Katora lying about her birthday, I, I was like, oh my God, Jay's birthday. Her lying about her employment, I had a feeling. I honestly had a feeling that she was lying about her employment. Like, I, she said she, was, she ran a nonprofit. I was like, okay, like, that seems to me to be bullshit. Um, but it's, I didn't have any other thought. Like, Jake, Jake and I, we had a new, new England connection. So, yeah. you know, we could ride with that as much as soon as possible. But I knew, I knew right off the rip that I could talk to Jake any way that I wanted to. And he's got thick enough skin to be like, you know, give it right back to me. That's why, like, 90% of the time he's calling me old man, I'm calling him little shit. Like, we're just sitting there having a good time. Um, and then, but with, like, with Katora, I didn't, I'm sorry, not Katora, Kelly. Um, I had no clue. Like, I gravitated to Kelly because I even told her this. And I said it, said this. I gravitate towards when it comes to to people, strong-minded people. I really do gravitate towards them. If I gravitate towards someone that has a weaker mind, then what ends up happening to me is that I then, like, my mindset starts going down, or I stay where I am, and then I'm an alpha in a room of people that aren't alphas. Like, I would rather be around that. Kelly's an alpha, so I saw her as a very strong competitor, and I'm like, yes, I want to be able to work with her because she's got what what we need to be able to win on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And and so when it finally did click in your head that Katura, that moment at the beach when you guys switched and she called you out in front of everybody at that moment, did you start to question the other relationships that you had with the players on that on your original starting tribe or not really? No. No. So no. it was just Katura. It, did it, but it, did it surprise you as much as the edit showed when Katura called you out like that? Oh, I was pissed, bro. Yeah. I was because it was one of those things like how we – like. Because there were constant conversations about, you know, I would say to her, because a couple of days in, I want to say like the second day in, I was told that my name was being thrown around and be voted out. I'm like, what the hell are we talking about? Why are we talking about voting anybody off right now? Like, what, what are we doing? And she was the person that had said it. And then I had repeatedly asked her if my name came up. And it was no, 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 no. And, I, and then I would reiterate it with the person that told me. And then the person that told me told someone else. And I'm like, I would just try to, you know, figure it out. Like, yeah, what what's the deal? Like, is is Katora saying my name? And you know, she's like, yeah, like you're you're on her radar. I'm like, oh man, like I don't I don't know why. And then I'll be like, hey Katora, like this, you know, we're, we're, we're cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, have you heard my name or anything like that? Like, I mean, no, no, I heard nothing. So so then that kept going on, and then we merged at the beach, and I'm just like, and then I'm talking, and she then goes and talks to Caleb, and listen, she got all the right in the world to do that, all the right in the world to do that, but. In the way that it was done, it was almost like, don't talk. I don't need you to say anything because I don't want to hear from you. I want to hear from Caleb to make sure that you're not lying to me. I'm just like, oh, oh okay. Okay. And I believe the, the phrase was foot in your ass. <laughs> she got the better of it anyway because mm -hmm. I got voted off before she did. But it, she didn't get voted off. She just lost the fight. Um, but that's kind of where that, at that point in time at the beach, it was like, okay, so. I'm I'm still trying to mend things throughout the course of the game, but I had no idea how deep her feelings were towards me and wanting me out of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and obviously, like we didn't we didn't necessarily see it in the edit too much. It seemed like it was little things that just kind of made that happen. And it, it, you don't want to answer this, you don't have to answer this. But was there was there ever like as you've like looked back at this or any discussions, was there anything that you were like, this was the moment where this took place, where the shift happened, like, mm -hmm. or where it was like, Katura now wants me out of the game. Was there anything that came to mind at all or no? Um, no, no. Um, you know, it was, <sighs> I wanted to avoid something going into Survivor. Now, as we all know, I was adopted as a kid. Okay. I was adopted by a white family. 
And majority of my friends are white. I, I started meeting my actual, my, my biological family, my black family at the age of 30, you know? So I, now I have more black people in my, my life, but, I can't blindly go into a scenario where I'm, I'm just supposed to go and, and, and align with people because we're the same skin color. Like if I don't like you, I'm not going to work with you, but I got to find a reason to want to work with you aside from that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that at that moment in time, at the very beginning, when I, you know, I had a conversation with Katara on the beach about, you know, an alliance and I'm like, okay, yes. I, I said yes in regards to it. Sure. And then a, another conversation came up a couple of days later and it was like, I'm like, wait a minute, like, hold on. This is, this is now starting to get to my inner moral por portion of my life. Like, I don't feel like comfortable in regards to that, but I'm not saying that because what are we doing? We're playing a game. Like this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, you know, I'll play out with us and I'm trying as hard as I can to be amicable, but I'm just not according to the edit. I'm not breaking through, but I'm going to be honest. Like, the problem and that that I see after watching the entire show, it had nothing to do with me why she was annoyed by it with me. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I did were funny, um, were silly, and if I can, at any point in time I can you know somewhat clear my name a little bit, the way that I speak to people is just like this. I don't yell at people. If I yell at someone. Believe me, you, you get, people are going to know when they're being yelled at. Like, mm -hmm. I'm extremely, extremely loud. Um, I coach football, and I got to yell across the field at kids that have a helmet on their head. So I got to be loud. I know how to be loud. But that's how I yell. I did not yell at anyone um, during the season. But because of, and looking back at the edit, how Katara was raised and what she had gone through, there was some deflection and I listen, if, if she wants to say no, yeah, you're native, this is perfectly fine. This is my thought. It's it's not on me. This is not on me. So I like her. I like her for who she is. I like her for as a as a human being, and I'll never say anything different in regards to her. Um, and she and I are are, you know, we, we talk to to be amicable with each other. But you know, as far as I figure out when this whole thing started, it started before we even started playing the game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's tough. I mean, we don't have to go on this one too much longer, and we can go to more fun conversation. But it's it's tough because I think when it when it comes to you know the way Survivor is in the world now, and and how it is like a huge social media thing, yeah. it does seem like people always want to take sides one way or the other. And like you know by you know by whatever podcast having Katara on doesn't mean they're necessarily taking Katara's side. By us having here, it's not like oh we're taking Bruce. No, no. I want to hear the yeah. story. You know what I mean? Like I want to hear it. And I think a lot of times nowadays people don't actually want to hear the story. They just want to jump to conclusions about what's going on. Yeah. And yeah. I do feel like when I was watching the show at the beginning, like I said, having met you briefly, um and watching this episode, like watching the episodes unfold, there was a bit of a gap there, even if I hadn't met you, of like, where did this switch happen? And so it's just one of those things where I'm glad I'm glad we were able to talk about it here and and you know kind of kind of get into it. But you know now we gotta we gotta start talking yeah. about some of it. I appreciate it. What 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 was fun and to Phil's point, like regardless of whether or not we met you, like 20 minutes before you jumped off the boat in the preview, which was so cool. Um, you had. And I, I think the fans did too, like have this constant positive, like, I can't believe I'm here energy the whole season, which I think this, I think people really like the season. I love the season. And I think it's no surprise that like the energy that you brought and also what we hear Jake say at the final tribal, he's like, nothing even went remotely closely right for me, but that happened on Survivor. And I'm so happy to be here. There's so much to be said about just like, being pumped to be doing that yeah like there's <clears throat> you know i remember when i got the phone call to to be able to come back um oh i'm sorry when i i heard it on the the podcast <laughs> yeah you oh, heard okay. it so wait tell people that because you didn't even know right you literally <laughs> heard it from jeff probst on that podcast so, Phil, you would have found out before he did yeah Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was i had it was a, the um Premiere of 44, I'm, I'm, you know, every emotion that you could ever think of is going through my head. Like I'm, I'm actually having my first, it's, I can say, I'm 
self-diagnosing. My first panic attack, because I'm watching this and I got like a hundred and like 40 people watching. And there's also like 60 other people, 70 other people in this establishment. And we're all watching and here comes dumbass. Da, 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 da. <laughs> now I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm freaking out. Like, ah! and then once that scene's over and I'm, I'm good. And then I'm like, I'm done. Survivor is over. Woo! I made it. I got a little bit of money to be there. Like, okay, perfectly fine. This side and the other. Now I got them right here. There's my glasses. I can't really see my phone. You guys are in there somewhere, but <laughs> I had my watch and my cell phone, but my cell phone was in my pocket. It was going off like at like 10 30. It was going off. All sorts of messages vibrating in my pocket. And then I'm like, I can't read it. So I'm not going to look at it. Um, I hang out with friends and it's like 1230. I go home. So now I go home and my wife is, she's already home from the, from the event. And she's like, you know, laying in bed and she's looking at her phone and she's like reading like well wishes from people. Cause remember, like I said, it was all like positive. Everybody's like so positive. For us. Um, so I'm like, all right, let me check mine. So I lay down and I look and I got a bunch of buddies. I had to send me messages like, oh my God, Bruce, you got to see this. You got to look at this. Like, like click this. So I clicked on the link and it brought me to Jeff's podcast. Now, a couple of days prior to, I had spoken to Jeff and he asked me questions. He's like, oh, this is, you know, this is a new podcast idea we're doing. I want to be able to, you know, uh, get your idea about it. And also I want to, you know, just interview you. You'd be the first one. You're the first one kind of technically out of the game. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm listening and I hear myself and they, they edit my voice in, instead and the other. And then all of a sudden Jeff's like, you know, here's a big announcement. We're going to invite Bruce back to come and play. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I just, I just fell. I'm like, I'm laying in bed crying my eyes out, and now it's it's like twelve forty five in the morning on Thursday morning, and you're not going to sleep, Alexa. I never slept so good. <laughs> really? Yeah. Swear to God, it wasn't. It wasn't even from like the from from the event and having you know, a couple of adult beverages. Um, it was none of that. It was legit. Like I. I love this game. Like this game, like there's something about it. And I said it in my casting interviews and stuff like that. Like this is, this is my life. I am a survivor. I've survived so many different things throughout the 46 years of my life at that point in time that people just don't understand. Like sit down with me. We'll have a conversation. We'll talk about it. And people are like, Oh my God, Bruce, I can't believe you. Like, yeah, it, it's been nuts. But to be able to sit there and, and be asked to come back. And I know how, and I know, how rare it is to come back i'm not jeremy collins mm -hmm. i'm not him like i'm not wendell i'm not i'm not boston rob i'm not any of the sandra i'm none of them like i never will be just for the simple fact that like they they've won this beautiful game at this point in time but i was asked to come back i'm like oh my god like that was that was such a great and amazing feeling a amazing feeling man and you definitely took advantage of it because whether people loved you or hated you, like Alexa said earlier, you were positive about it the entire time. And you yeah. came out and you played and you got screen time and you got all that. And I got to bring up. So here you come. You're excited. You just got asked to play Survivor again. You show up. You're like, hell yeah. I was barely on season 44. Nobody's going to give a shit that I'm here. And here's Emily being like, let me push back on that, which again, needed on a t-shirt immediately. Anybody listening, <laughs> like, let me push back on that and immediately call you out on the mat. What was going through your head in that moment? Not when you got to do the confessional about it, but in that actual moment of we just got here and already somebody on their tribes calling me out. What were you thinking? In that moment, the only thing I was thinking to myself was go ahead, keep it up, shoot yourself in the foot because yeah. like, if I could have clapped back, I could have been like, yo, I don't know who you are. I suggest you just please shut up and let your actions show. Like, I will show you that I will. I am meant to be here. Like, even if you think that I have an advantage, I don't have an advantage. I could I could have gone. It could have gone any which way but loose. But it's a game. And unbeknownst to myself that I was already going to be hated on within the first 10 minutes of being on the beach. Um, I, you have to you have to play that. So. Emily, the way that her curve went is that she got that talking to by Sabaya. And then she's like, oh, what am I going to do? And then Caleb, you know, is just sitting up there like that, that big bird, <laughs> that little vulture waiting to grab somebody to pull under his wing, which is great for him. That was his gameplay. Um, comes, swoops in and, and takes care of Emily. So but for, for my thoughts at that moment in time, I'm just like <laughs> inside. I'm like, my God. 
woman, shut up. Like Jeff already just called me out. Like, what are you doing? And then I was just, I just kind of like let it go. And you know, every face that they showed, I was thinking back, like every face they showed was, was not anything other than that moment. Just because I just remember like her saying something, I look over, I'm like, <laughs> looking down, like, 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 stop. <laughs> you can, you can only have a natural reaction to that because that just never happens. There's always like small talk and like a little bit of shit talking on the mats, but that was like, that, that was a, call out like directly to you i've been like yeah. as a viewer we're all like oh my god i can't believe this is happening <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> and let's talk about a massive 180 right that woman who is calling you out on the mat on day minute one mm -hmm. ends up being the one who eventually convinces you you don't need to play your idol yeah <laughs> What so what was it about Emily when you actually got to start playing the game with her? Because obviously you're gonna have your your assumptions about her in the back of your mind, you're gonna be saying, Oh, I can't trust her because she did whatever. But what was it when you actually started playing with her that got you to that point? So um, so let me back up a little bit. Now, Emily, when she was she was jarring at me, which is perfectly fine. I have no problem with that at all. Um Everybody that I knew was like, oh, my God, I hate her. Bah, 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 bah. Who's a curly hair girl? Can't stand it. I'm like, oh, that's Emily. Like, leave her alone. She's all right. Like, there's nothing. Like, she was speaking her mind. Like, if I'm no friend, then I speak my mind. So just she's cool. Like, it's all right. <laughs> Even though I knew what I'm telling my friends is she voted me out. Like, oh, got me not to use my my idol. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that, like, when Caleb came in and swooped in and and scooped up the little baby bird and nursed her back to life like mm -hmm. i had a feeling in my mind that emily would have would have came along and had fun and played the game with me if i treated her the right way meaning that when i first saw her she came to me she's like i'm so sorry i'm like and they showed on tele television like you do not need to say sorry to me like th this is the game this is how we do it like it's perfectly fine like when she then voted me out like i understood it was a part of the game um but i will go back to this hannah if you watch this show well, you should be watching <laughs> if your ass didn't quit emily would have went home every circumstance would have stayed the same mama j would have went home and i would have at least rolled into the final seven with the idol in my pocket Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is the beauty of this game. Like, you can sit back on your own couch. Like, I, I got a couch right there. I'm in my basement. I'm, I got a couch right there, and I sat there. And it took me two months to really start clicking things together. And I'm just like, oh, man. Like, every piece, every little thing that we've done, literally, it just keeps coming back to my mind. Like, oh, this is this is what, what would have happened. What is it? What is it called? Uh, butterfly effect? Or, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So many different options and things that could have happened what person what were you gonna was there any chance you were gonna play your idol that night yes there was yes really? I'm, I'm very like i went <sighs> <laughs> wait, wait, sorry sorry to get into therapy here but yeah. let's go Bruce. give us with all your friends let's go <laughs> I, I know it's only, it, it's only us in the room right now um <laughs> so what happens is this what happened was so um, before I went into to tribal, um, you know, I was so, I knew that I was going home. I knew that my name was the next on the block. I knew that it was going to be Jake as well. Like I had, I had at least that insight. And when we came up with the plan, the plan made sense to me in my mind. And it's like, you always, you know, they always, people always say, when you get to, to tribal, you got to try and find that cue, that one thing that someone's going to say, or someone's going to agree with in body language and then you're going to figure out oh my god am i going the one to go home well now where i'm sitting i'm looking this way there's the people next to me but people behind me i can't see body language mm -hmm. and i'm not going to sit there and keep turning and looking around at everybody like looking like the nervous nelly so i kind of had to just listen and, and maybe see if i could pick up on something but there was a point in time i'm thinking i'm like my, it's in my shoe it's in my left shoe this plan very well could work. And my problem that I ran into, and, and God, if I ever get to play this game again, I promise you this, I will not do what I did with Jake when I was sitting there counting down, oh, broken hand, counting down <laughs> for, 
the four, assuming the final eight, and how to be able to get there. Mm-hmm. Not at any point in time that I do that prior to. I never mentioned, I'm going to make it to 16. I'm going to make it to 15. I'm going to make it. I never did that. What I did was, this is my game, and I'm going to kick ass and do it. And I think that what probably happened was this is like one of the first times that I was actually in jeopardy, but not in jeopardy to get voted out. So I put the cop, you know, this is what we say in New England, they put the cop before the horse, mm-hmm. and here we are. Like, I, I was... You know they they got me but the plan the plan that i had work, would have worked so well so well because we and i collaborated collaborated it um it would have worked so well to be able to, to take out julie or mama jay uh-huh. and then take out d because i knew d and austin you know were were somewhat of a you know hop along together at that point in time i, I won't say couple because you know you're not a yeah. couple and survivor um and then like it would have been nice to stop popping off three before, and it would have been Julie would have been the first one to go down. Um, and to do that, she would have never seen it coming. She would have left with Austin's idol. I didn't even know she had it, but she would have left with Austin's idol, and here we are. So yeah, I I will say like that was the one time I think I defended you the most on this podcast was when you did go home in that situation because yeah, from the edit, it's easy to sit there and say, man, Bruce should have played his idol. What a, what a what a dummy, but. <laughs> Also, your reasoning for getting rid of Julie made 1000% sense to the people watching the show. Like as as I'm sitting there I'm going, "D, Julie, Austin and Drew are running this game. All all the Bello 4 plus Emily or Bello 3 plus Emily need to do is get together. They have the idol. Like it makes sense. There's going to be a vote split. Julie has to go. Julie's actually a threat to win." I don't know if it had totally clicked in the head of everybody by that. Yeah, no. What no. made it real tough and and so you go out the way of some other repeat players, but it was their third times, but Aubrey and Kelly Wentworth, right? Because you yeah. have to go home with an idol in your pockets. You might not be Austin Rob. It might not be Sandra or Jeremy Collins, but you can beat <laughs> Kelly Wentworth and Aubrey. That's pretty good. Some good yeah. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you this though, like like the, the other side of of the coin that I'm I take a little bit of pride on is that, and also looking back to the relationship with myself and the Torah, then not to, to beat that dead horse, but to like me going to her and saying, Oh my God, I gave you Kelly's idol. She went home with it, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. she was like, she bought it. Like she bought it at that moment in time. She did. Cause she, unbeknownst to me, she would have been like, Oh my God, like this is a great way to get Bruce out. But then she's, she, she bought it in the sense of thinking that they didn't have it. And then, because I was trying to mend fences, extend olive branches to her, um, I guess subconsciously, I was like, now nah, I'm only kidding, how's my acting skills? Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm thinking that I'm aligned with you, and if you we were saying this to each other for a good period of time, I, I, then there's some truth to be in that, in my mind, that I can trust you. Mm-hmm. But then when I went to Jake, and I said the very same thing to Jake, but I never went back to Jake and said, I'm only kidding. I wanted Jake to go talk to Austin and Drew, and he did, and they showed it. Like mm-hmm. that's exactly what I wanted to do. Now, if that would have been the case, if Katora and I would have been a little bit closer game wise, I went to Jake and told Jake, "Nah, bro, that, like that never happened. I needed you to do that. Like, please forgive me, but you didn't swear on your nana. But I needed you to do that. Like that all would have made sense, and then it would have been so much easier to then now have them throw all their votes on me, and then." I play my idol. We throw the votes. We put the votes on one person, and that person's going. Or, I, or if we have enough numbers, if Emily just would have stuck with us, mm-hmm. um, because Katora didn't know it, Emily didn't know it. They didn't see how far in the bottom they were. Or four. They were either five or six. Like they didn't know where they fell with that five or six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so feel so smart right now. Like I really know what I'm yeah. talking about. I, well, what I think you've had. Well, I wasn't expecting you to end there. So sorry. I was listening, but yeah. it seems like you have had what six, seven, eight, nine months to think that through pretty thoroughly of what exactly was going to happen. Yeah. What was it What was it that made it so that the Bellows couldn't vote together, though? Because if you look at what happened when Caleb went home, and it, it is pretty much the reason why you went home in this situation, no matter how much sense it made, no matter how well you were able to articulate it, even if you articulated it better in this moment than you did on the island, which I don't know because I wasn't on the island. Yeah. Like, what was it that made the Bellows not vote together? Because if you look at those first couple tribals after Caleb went home, it was between a Bellow and a Bellow every time. It wasn't like, oh, we're either going to get rid of Kendra or we're going to get rid of uh, D. It was, we're going to get rid of Kendra, we're going to get rid of Jake. We're going to get rid of Bruce or we're going to get rid of Jake. We're going to and get, and Julie got the one vote, but that was from you. It's like, what was it that made it so that this wasn't going to work? 
Um, I think it was it's the the early days of Bellow. You know, the early days of Bellow of of, of not wanting to vote. Oh, excuse me, wanting to vote, talking about, sorry, talking about voting someone off when we didn't need to. So, and then the, it's like the sprinkling of the, of the poison, you know, in the soup. You put a little bit in it and you start getting a little sick. And then once you put a little bit more, you get more sick. And that's just what happened. It was kind of an infectious sick that was happening inside of the people of, of Bello, the core group of Bello. Um, and then it was like, okay, so we go and, we merge and we now get Caleb, we get a new person. So, oh, Caleb's now an easier person to work with than Bruce is. Mm-hmm. And so now it's like, okay, so it's okay to now talk about getting rid of Bruce and get rid of Jake because now we have we have Caleb who's you know a strong player and he's personal, this that, and the other. <laughs> Excuse me. And to talk about to, to jump on the now that Caleb is now in the the mix of this conversation, not at any point in time did I say that Bello could not talk to anybody. Like that would just be the dumbest thing in the entire world. Especially with like, if you're playing old school survivor, like old school survivor, go in and be a dictator and people are gonna follow you because that's just what pe- they did back then. Like that's how I feel about it. That's what they did. You can't do that nowadays. You just can't do it. Like survivor does not, will not incorporate that. So when I was talking to Caleb on the beach that day, uh, about the water well, I'm like, bro, like you, People don't realize the conversation that we had as Bello before we left the Lulu beach, or Lulu, if you will, and we left that beach. It was literally that <laughs> we don't want to be seen as if we're working together. Mm-hmm. Well, that now turns into paranoia with everybody. So now nobody wants to talk to anybody. And if they do talk, they're going to talk to other people, like other people in the, you know, to Reba. And then they're not coming back and talking to Bello. I said this to them the first night we showed up. I remember very vividly, and, and anybody can back this up. I was I slept on the beach every night. Every night I slept on the beach. I couldn't sleep on bamboo. I'm too old for that stuff. <laughs> Bones are crickety. So we're, I'm on the beach, and I sat up. I sat up, and I looked over to my left, and about maybe 50 yards from me, Julie, D. Austin and Drew. They're sitting there having their nightly powwow. Mm-hmm. They would get together every night and sit and talk about what they wanted to do, recap on their day, whatever happened. And I went back to the bell. I'm like, guys, like, do you realize that they're getting together on the beach and they're talking to each other? Like, we're not talking to each other at all. And that's when I went to Caleb and like, bro, like, you got to fix this. And by the way, like, you're telling us not to talk to people. You're bouncing around here. And I said the butterfly thing. You're bouncing around here like a butterfly. Like Everybody's seeing it. Everybody's noticing you. Like you're, you're, you have too much heat on you right now. Like you need to slow it down, fix the bellow. Cause I have no power, no, no ability to bring Bella back together. Cause they're too afraid to talk to each other mm-hmm. or it's me from what I'm getting. Well, now watching the edited show. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm just like, yo, let's fix this. So now when everybody dog piles in on Caleb, I was quite surprised because the way that it was, looked at at camp and said, oh yeah, well, you know, we're going to ride a ride die with Caleb and everybody wrote his, wrote his name down. And if you notice on a couple of the votes, it was mass, mass exodus to vote someone off. Yeah. As opposed to like, you know, splitting votes, whatever have you. So. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of already answered a question that I had, but from the other side, did you or anyone realize how close those four Rebas were or did they hide that well until until they didn't have to. Uh, I noticed it. I noticed it. And it, you know, and I'm not saying, oh my God, I'm on the podcast. I'm going to say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. You have to tell your own story here. We're never going to fact check you. Just go ahead. <laughs> Big news. What have um, you been doing with the million dollars you won for winning Survivor 45, Bruce? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I noticed it. I noticed it. Like, you notice when people are doing certain things. So I, you know, I, I remember going over and speaking to because the three were together, the three of them together. It was his mom and Jay was actually on a confessional. It was Julie Austin. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Drew, um, D, and Austin, and they were all talking. I went up and I was like, "Yo, what's going on, guys? Like, this is like one of the first times that I talked to them." And they're like, "Yo, we're willing to work with you this and the other." And I'm just they're like asking me questions now about the Bello Group. And right when they started asking me questions about the Bella Group, and and I've been in sales my entire life, I'm sitting there. So Drew really was the one to ask a question about the Bella Group. 
and I looked at him because remember we had gone and he, this was in the edit. We had gone on that journey. And then he said, you know, my, my bad, my bad gameplay was not giving too much information. Mm -hmm. Well, I gave him half truths of information and all of them were like, Oh yeah. Mm, all of them. Mm. I'm like, huh. And then I look at I looked at D and I'm saying to D, I'm like, oh, like we really haven't talked. I'd love to be able to talk to you later on because I think I can honestly see all of us working together. And I looked directly at D when she did that. And of course, my my mind's eye, oh excuse me, my uh, my side vision is looking at the two of them and they look at each other and then they look back over at, at D. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like the 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 little things that that happen that you pick up on, those are the, that those are the cues that let me know that. Yeah, these four are working together. They're mm -hmm. definitely working together because I remember multiple times Mama J and D would be sitting on the on you know in the shelter and they would just be sitting there talking and, and hemming and horn having a great time. And I was just like, wow, that doesn't seem like you know, two people that are just playing the game to to outlast each other. Was there so. a crack? Was there a crack ever? I mean, I feel like I feel like maybe there wasn't the people to make it happen, even if there was a crack, but was, were those re before ever showing signs of not wanting to work together? No, nope. Um, you know, even when, even when we had guys night, <laughs> we hang out guys night. finally 41 minutes in, we finally get guys night. All right. Here we, go. <laughs> we had, a, we had such a great time. Like that, that montage, that montage was so much fun to watch back because that was, that was probably like 90% of, of what really happened. The only, the other 10% that they're missing is the moments that we had down sitting on the beach. Like they showed us on the beach for a minute, but we, the, we cut up and laughed so much on that beach. Like we would just a bunch of dudes just hanging out. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, uh, uh, Drew was like, you know, don't really get the bro out. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah, bro, you, you, you did pretty well. You did pretty well. <laughs> You're done with us. Um, but yeah, even at that point in time, I could see Jake, doing a little gravitation towards towards Austin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Austin and Drew, like they were the the conversations were a little different. Like things you pick up on little things. They're just a little different compared to like conversations with, you know, Austin and Jake or me and me and me and um, me and Drew. Like a little different between those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you feel? And this is not the question anybody wants me to ask, but how did you feel that you were part of a montage to a Kenny Loggins song? Did that mean more to you than any of the other guys there? <laughs> Being aged. Um, <laughs> like a fine wine. Yeah, it's like a fine wine. It was, no, it was great. It was great. You know what? But, but here's, I'm, 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 I'm hating I'm going to admit to this. I did not know that that song was on Top Gun. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, hey, weren't you in the you were in the Navy, right? I was in the Navy, but that listen, I guess it's not Air Force, but still. Yeah, but I cannot stand Tom Cruise. I can't stand him. My wife, listen, Tom, Tommy Boy, if you're listening, I know you are. Um sorry, can't stand <laughs> Tom, Tom's a huge avid listener of the special. You don't like Mission Impossible movies? You know what? I I can like, watch him, I just can't stomach him. Like it's something about his acting, like it's something about it, like it's just like Remember the movie Liar Liar? Yeah. Remember the movie with Jim Carrey when he would just be like, and he was they were doing the, the, the spoofs, and he was like, blah, blah, blah. And she, the woman said, over actor? Like, that's what I think of Tom Cruise. Like, when he acts, like, he overacts. Like, and yes, he takes it serious, and it's whatever. It's just, I can't do it. My wife loves that movie, and I'm just like, you know what? No, I can't watch it. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, unfortunately, the Kenny Loggins song, you know, the, the one that you get to, the montage you get to be a part of on TV will bring back the horrid memories of having to watch Top Gun. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce. Um, oh, God, a universally loved movie. Yeah. Our, uh, I'll send the apologies from Survivor here. But um, so let's talk about, because we got like 15 minutes left here. So let's talk about your last vote. So again, this gets into the edit a little bit, right? Because everybody sees D say, Bruce, you should have played it. And that's the only time they showed you during the jury phase was that moment of you being like, I hate you. You know, was that actually your reaction to that moment? Is that why you voted for Austin? What was going on here? How did how did Austin get your vote? I almost fell backwards off of the freaking stoop that I was sitting on because I laughed so hard. I love that she said that. Like you listen, you are you you have to you, 
just watch any interview that D does or go on her social and just see how she interacts. Like that, that is D. D's fiery. And when she said that, listen, I know that she probably had in her mind that she had at least four votes. She probably knew she had four votes and did not need mine. Okay. So yeah. she, she did her thing. And I love that. I do love that. Now, the reason why I voted for Austin, okay, was Austin had, and, I'm, and I didn't know this during the, the gameplay, but he was my biggest competitor in my own mind. Like, I was looking at him like, okay, he's a young 20, I believe he was 26 at the time, maybe. Um, I had him my 20s. Mm -hmm. And... I wanted to, my thing, my thing was physical with Survivor. Like I knew that I was going to be a physical threat in this game. And you were, I mean, what'd you win two straight or you were two one, straight. Yeah. You won two straight and we're close in the third. So I mean, you're yeah, getting, one, two yeah. straight and was close in the third. And when I lost in the third, <laughs> when I lost in the third. I slid down off the thing. I went underwater and I was like, do I take a gigantic gulp of water right now? because I'm pissed off that I lost to Austin and not, not out of being mad. I'm just because he's in my mind, I want to be able to do this thing and, and I want to be able to beat him because he's, he's physically stronger than I am, but I got that old man thing. Mm -hmm. And I asked him after the fact, and he's like, Bruce, I literally had 15 more seconds. So 30, you know, 30 more seconds. And I was down. I was like, Oh my God. Like I was, I was up there three minutes longer than it needed to be. Like my, my pinky fingers were and my ring fingers were on both hands were numb for days for days that's it was insane um but that's the reason why i voted for austin because and and then also listening to him um and i had more of a personal thing with austin because he and i spoke a lot when we were in the shelter like and even at the beach you know him wanted to cook and him you know um wanted to go back to school and like just the things that he was saying you know I have a 17 year old son so i'm connecting with him somewhat because i want my 17 year old son to do something that he loves, you know? And I'm looking at Austin and Austin's giving me, you know, these things. I'm like, oh man, like my little buddy can do that too. Like, okay, keep talking, you know? Um, and I talked to, when I talked to Austin, I'm like, yo, what'd you cook today? Cause he's like, he wants to get in the cooking. What'd, what'd you cook? Cause we had those good conversations. So that's the reason why I voted for Austin. Any chance of voting for Jake? Jake, I love you, bro. And we, we've already had this conversation, he and I, and, um, you know, there was a pot. There would have been a possibility, like a thirty percent chance of voting for Jake. Um, the reason why is is Jake played a little erratic, um, and he like my game was somewhat put in harm because of Jake. Like with Austin, he never really put my game in harm. Jake did put my game in harm in a couple of different things. Like we would have just voted together, um, or if, you know, he him wanting to go to rocks for Caleb at the very beginning. Like, and I even had the conversation. I'm like, bro, what do you want to rocks for Caleb for? Like, seriously, like, let's protect what we got. And he's like, nah, man. Like, he's he's a good dude. I'm like, I understand he's a good dude, but we're trying to win a million dollars. Excuse me. And granted, he made it further than I did. Um, but you know, it was a thirty percent chance of me voting for Jake because we 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 were fast friends out there. Like, I I plan on seeing him in Dorchester really soon. Um, but it's just like he game wise, he and I just really didn't click by way of how to play the game. That makes sense. That's fair. I just was curious because it seemed like Jake had a chance, but then no votes yeah. to him, even though a big, a lot of bellow on the jury. Um, go ahead, Alexa. It did seem like you two had the closest, like personal relationship, at least maybe like from his side, but we also, you and Julie, it sounds like had we're fairly close as well, but that was something that we didn't see at all. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Mama, and Jay, Mama and Jay and I literally, so we merged, we're all down on the beach hugging. Yay. Ha ha. Good to see you. Moving on to everybody else. And we walk up to the camp and they would explain this to the camp. And, and I went over to Julie and she, she says, um, are you having a, as hard of a time as I am to get them to do stuff? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god like yes Gen Z, it, man. you know but it's like and i even and caleb even said something when he was with katara Ooh, go, 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 go. like <clears throat> and i think i might have said it too like don't talk about it be about it just go do it like what are we doing 
It's like, we need firewood. Let's go get firewood. Oh, let's have a conversation about where we're going to get firewood from. Like, no, let's not have a conversation. Let's just walk out there. And if something looks like it will burn, pick it up and bring it back. Like, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. And the coconuts, like, we need coconuts to live. Hello. Like, our re- the way that we, with, with early Bello, we literally, before we went and left the beach, we would open up a coconut. Eat as much coconut till before we threw up, and it wasn't a lot, but it was eat that, and then drink maybe three ounces of the coconut, you know, the juice, so that we had some little bit of energy that's there. So when it's like, okay, who's gonna get the coconut? It's like, I didn't want to eat them. Like I haven't eaten coconuts since I've been back. Um, but it's like that's a necessary evil because you don't want to go in when, without having any energy, you know, without without any substance in your belly at all, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just go uh-huh. forever. <laughs> we're we're getting we're getting down. Like I said, we we only have like ten minutes left, a little bit less than ten minutes. So there's two questions that are still kind of bouncing around in my brain that I want to make sure I ask and and give you at least like a little bit of time to get to. But one, when we saw you as a person on this show in that in a really good episode, you were talking about the realization of you know how you you didn't realize how people were perceiving you. Yeah. And that how that might affect you in your everyday life, real life and everything like that. How has that been with your family, with your kids and, and just like how you are as a person? Did that change you at all? Was it, was it like a bigger moment or did you kind of come home and realize, no, I have everything that I need right here anyway? Yeah, it was, um, it was one of those things that, you know, I had said uh, before is that with my daughter, mainly with my daughter, my wife, you know, we we've been together for 27 years now. Like we've been together for a long time, longer than half of my life. So with my daughter, I could go to my daughter and say, Hey daughter, please tell me if I'm overbearing to you. And, and you know what I'm saying? It's going to make it awkward. And she's not going to give me the right answer or I'm sorry, the honest answer. Cause she doesn't want to hurt my feelings. <clears throat> so what I did was when I came home, I made sure that I grew upon the relationship that she and I already have. Like, we have a great relationship, my daughter and I, and then even with my son, my son and I, because it's not just specifically to my daughter, it's to my, my family. Um, my son and I, we have a, a great relationship. Like we, we have more conversations now than before I left mm. because I'm doing the, the active things that I should have been doing that I felt that I was doing. But somebody, pardon me, somebody tweaking that a little bit and saying something different about like how it's being perceived, like, well, wait a minute. I will make some adjustments and some changes. Like if Katara would have said something to me that I was annoying her, I promise you, I promise you that I would have turned and I would have been like, oh, oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. And it would have been a different scenario. Like I not even someone said I was acting. It would have been like, I don't want to be the kind of person that's going to make someone feel like they're they're less than or they get frustrated with me. Like, I don't want that. I don't need that around me, especially if you're around me for 24 hours. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. And that's and great. it was nice that they they aired that with you because I know, you know, there there can be frustrations when you're watching your edit back. It happens every season, but it's nice when you get those human moments like that. The the last question I have, and it's it's more fun. So um, you know, here we go, like end it on a positive note. And I know Alexa, you 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 could still get in here with a question too. So don't feel no, bad. Too, but no. but I just want to know. Was there a relationship with a specific player you wish that they would have shown that really wasn't in there? And was there a moment, was there a fun moment that you wish would have made the cut that didn't make the cut that you think would have, that, that just like stands out to you from your time out there? Um, the fun moment that I wish that they would have had, that they would have aired. Um, there were a couple of them. Um, and you might not find this as fun. I find it as fun. When I first, when we went and we came around the corner to the first challenge, we had the A-frame and to go underneath with the mud, mm-hmm. I lost my mind. I had massive PS- PTSD. Like my mind went right to, oh no. And I just started like tearing up and face away from everyone. Like I was very emotional. And then we go, we go to our mats, they walk us through everything. And I literally like, I was, I was crying. And Jeff came up and Jeff was like, Bruce, you all right? I'm like, no, he's like, Bruce, I promise you, we'll, we'll, we'll make, we are making sure that you will be safe. And he gave me the biggest hug, bro. Like mm-hmm. that right there, I wish that would have made the show. I wish that would have made it just because it would have showed a little bit of a, a different dynamic. I know Jeff is a showrunner. I, that part of it like meant so much to me 
because even going back and watching myself getting hurt and him holding my head, like that's fun to me. Like that's that shows the, the love of this game. Mm-hmm. So I would just a good them. guy. People yes. forget that sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Some people hate him, but yeah, I think he's a good guy. guy. Yeah. Um, another fun thing that I wish they would have did and showed was <laughs> like we when we were all were out there hunting for crabs and the noises we were making and the, the, the fun and the laughter and like you know you fall on your ass and it's like oh my god and you just stop laughing like those things i wish they would have shown because that stuff was fun like we were having a good time even though we're trying to find something to kill and eat like we're having a good time and the last thing i have so many <laughs> the last thing i remember um we we're hunting for crabs and there was this like rock Oh, where Matthew fell and got hurt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we were on that beach. Um, where right around the backside of it, I'm standing up on top of this rock, and I know that there are like four crabs. And I'm not lying, it's not a fisherman story. There are four crabs about this big, like underneath the rock. And I got this long stick, I'm standing there, and I'm ready to go. And I'm like, oh, 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 we're eating good tonight, ladies and gentlemen. All of a sudden, an eel comes out of nowhere. Ooh. nowhere chases these bad boys down and like devours two of them oh my god michael jordan would have been like bro bro i didn't have those kind of hops i jumped like <laughs> 72 feet <laughs> i think i landed on top of where where matt was trying to climb to <laughs> i'd be able to shit myself like oh my god and then kendra without missing a beat that's some national geographic shit right there <laughs> 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 that was that was probably one of the best moments in time that we had that I had personally on that on that Rio Beach because I'm sorry on the uh, the uh, Bello. Bello Beach, original Bello Beach because um, yeah it was just me and, and Kendra and I think that at that point in time she and I started talking a little bit more because mm-hmm. you know, I could see now her personality is completely different and she saw you almost get hurt that 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 bonds yeah. people you know yeah That's you it. know and and not I know again. there's some people not watching. <laughs> Bruce has an arm cast on. So, you know, here we are. But uh, yeah. It was the eel attack. How big is this eel? It's eating a crab that's that big. For people who are listening, it's the size of a soft, two softballs. Oh, oh, I said it was the size of the Kraken. It was huge. <laughs> it was just, there was no need for this thing to be as large as it was. No, it was literally, it, it, its head, it had to be like the size of my hand. And this is, I don't know, it was, mm-hmm. it was massive. And it, it, snapped into these crabs I actually was kind of jealous of the crab because oh, not that it was eating but it like, could open up those crabs so easily like <laughs> you just said you were jealous of the crab you should you meant you were jealous of the eel, eel. i was gonna say oh, you wanted to eel, get eel, alive by an crab. eel i mean you could have just it's jumped in <laughs> i was so hungry i was like i don't care i want to be here anymore no, yeah. <laughs> uh, alexa do you have any other questions you want to throw up bruce here before yeah i w- how did you prepare whether it be physically or mentally differently your second time around you have a minute and a half okay so i didn't prepare at all fantastic i didn't i swear to god like i you know my life has been a culmination of like working out and this and the other so i really felt good like i would do like push-ups and sit-ups every now and again my wife would yell at me all the time like oh my god i gotta go to the gym like i don't want to go to the gym like go to the gym i'm gonna hurt myself you know so i i just packed on a little bit of weight like two or three pounds and that was pretty much it like i just went out there and knowing that i was just gonna i was playing with house money every time i did the big confessionals whatever have you i would say i'm playing with house money i'm not even supposed to be here right now and mm-hmm. i just ran with that but i there was no real preparation yeah there you That's go. don't listen think- to bruce kids <laughs> yeah. it's so easy to I feel like so many people over prepare and so i think if you go in and you're like Whatever, I'm here. This is why I said. It also up depends here. on kind of who you are. I mean, you didn't really get to play with him on 44 because you might not even remember that he was on your tribe. But when Carson was there, I mean, he had to prepare so much more. But also, that's where Carson was at in his life compared to where you are at in your life. There's a difference between yeah. what preparation needs to go into that. So, yeah, like Carson, he gained all that weight. And when I remember when I was went into the military, I left high school 125 pounds. And then I went to boot camp. I was 155. I went to my ship and I was on my ship for about a year and I shot right up to 180. And it was all muscle at that point in time. So I was able to, you know, that's how my life went. And I kept that kind of muscle mass on. So gotcha. Yeah. All right. Give us, give us like 20 seconds of summation for anybody who's like excited to play survivor, wants to play survivor, anything like that. Take us home, Bruce. All right. So listen, I do cameos on a regular basis. It's so much fun. And a majority of the people, they literally send me messages and they say, 
can you tell my cousin that he needs to apply for Survivor? So if you are listening and if you're somebody's cousin, <laughs> feel <laughs> free, you have to apply for Survivor. I love this show. I want to see this thing go on to like, you know, we get to season 75. I want to be able to watch it over and over and over. Just keep watching this show because it's amazing. So you have this thing in your stomach, a little pit in your stomach. It's going to say, oh, my God, do I, do I not? Yes, you do. Once you feel that, just do it. Apply for Survivor. Get on this damn show. Live your life. Have a different experience. Whatever it is that you need to do, just get out there, play this game, and have fun. Perfect. There's your hour. Thank you all so much for listening. Become a patron. Patreon.com slash The Specialist. Bruce, thank you so much for coming on. I'm so glad we were able to do this. Hope to have you on again in the future. Everybody else, we'll see you next time.